Section 2, 1, Basic Assumptions. Objective, to use number properties to simplify expressions. Number properties. Number properties. All right, so we're going to talk about properties of numbers. Um, and we're going to use those properties to simplify expressions. There's a little bit of vocabulary in this section. But have no fear, you're going to do fine, you're going to do great, you're going to do spectacular, okay? Here we go. Now, let's talk about these properties. What properties am I talking about? These properties right here. We've got a few properties of uh, the real numbers we want to talk about. Um, there's, you know, at this time in your career, it might not seem, they seem somewhat, might seem insignificant, but they're very significant. Anytime you simplify an expression, solve an equation, you're using these, these properties without even knowing it. Um, so now we're going to make, you know, be a little bit more explicit with these properties. We're going to actually, you know, take the time and consciously think about what properties we're using as we simplify these expressions. Okay? Yo, let's do it. Now, let's talk about the properties. Okay? Here we go. Um, closure properties. All right? There's a closure property of multiplication and addition. What it's saying is the real numbers are closed under multiplication and addition. They're actually also closed under division, but uh, which is kind of like multiplication. Um, but the real numbers are. Now, um, for instance, I could, I could say that um, like something, you're like, oh yeah, I know that that if you multiply two real numbers, what it's saying is, if you multiply two numbers, real numbers, you get a real number. If you add two real numbers, you get a real number. Um, and you might be saying, yeah, duh, but um, so, so when might this not be true? Like, isn't that always true? Well, if we weren't talking about the real numbers, suppose you're talking about instead, um, let's say, um, positive integers. And I want to know if positive integers were closed under subtraction. The answer is no, because there, there's a way that I can subtract positive integers, positive numbers, so that I don't get something that's in that domain that's in positive integers. For instance, 5 minus 7. If I do that out, if I do 5 minus 7, 5 minus 7, I get negative 2, which isn't a positive number, okay, a positive integer, a positive number. So, I wouldn't say that the positive, you know, integers are closed under subtraction, but they are closed under addition, because no matter what two positive numbers you add, you'll always get a positive number, so it's closed. It's like, you know, you can do this operation and you'll still be within the, in that same domain. Um, so that's what it's saying. If you, if you multiply or add real numbers, you still end up with a real number, okay? That's the closure property. The commutative property, property you've probably seen before. It just says, you know, A plus B is the same as B plus A. You're going to get the same sum. So the order you're adding them in is, is, does not change the value. Um, the same thing, that this is the commutative property of multiplication. The commutative property of multiplication says A times B is the same as B times A. All right, well, <clears throat> would there be a commutative property of subtraction? Is 5 minus 2 the same thing as 2 minus 5? No. There isn't a commutative property of subtraction or division. Is 1 divided by 2 the same as 2? No. 2 divided by 1? No. 2 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is half. So, you know, they're not the same. But, yes, there is a commutative property for addition and multiplication. Next one is the associative property. Um, and it's basically saying it doesn't matter what you associate, which, you know, which of these terms you're associating with each other. Um, I forgot to put the one for multiplication. Uh, I'll put that right here. But it says that whether you, you know, if you associate these two together first and find that sum and add the C, you get the same. It's going to be the same result as if you associated these two together and then added those. So associative is like the way it's grouped. It doesn't really, will not affect the, the, uh, the, the, the sum. It's the same value. There's also one for multiplication I forgot to put up, which just looks like this. Um, AB times C is the same as a times B, C. Same thing, whether you associate these first, whether you find this product first, um, and then multiply by A, or if you find this product, then multiply Either way, you still got the same value. That's the, um, the associative property. Um, then there's the, uh, um, so these are what we're going to be using. These. Remember, commutative has to do with the order. It doesn't matter which, you know, what's in the front and the back. Associative is the grouping, okay, um, how the groups are, where your parentheses are. Um, if you're slipping five parentheses around it in, in like a, a sum, 
Um, it doesn't matter. Reflexive property of equality. These are properties of equality now. This says that A is equal to A. Everybody is equal to themselves. Okay? Pretty simple. And then there's a symmetric, okay? Think of symmetry like, you know, across, uh, you know, think, you know, like over a symmetric about a plane. You know, like people's faces are symmetric, you know, it's a kind of like reflection-y. Um, well, if A is equal to B, then flip it, bang, the reflection B is equal to A. Uh, uh, I mean, sorry, symmetric. No, I always mix this too well, too, so sorry about that. Yeah, symmetry, okay? Um, reflection would be the exact same. The exact same. Okay, all right. Um, transitive, if A is equal to B and B equals to C, then A is equal to C. Uh, you know. You've probably used this a lot of times, you know. Um, reflect, this uh, transitive property will come up a ton in geometry, so, and we use it all the time in solving equations. You know, a uh, quick example, if, you, if you're solving an equation, you're like, oh, you know, H equals 3 um, plus M, um, H equals 3M minus 2. Oh, look at this. Well, if H equals this and H also equals this, if A equals B, and that B equals C, then I can say this is equal to this and solve the equation. 3m minus 2 equals 3 plus m and solve for m. That is using the uh, transitive property, okay? So remember, quickly, again, reflexive, everything's equal to itself. Okay, you look in the mirror, you are you. Symmetric, if a equals b, uh, so it's, the symmetry says that b is also equal to a. Transitive, if a equals b, and that thing is equal to something else, and a is equal to that final thing. A um, couple little vocab words, if you have a sum, when you have a sum, the things you're adding together are called terms. When you have a product, A times B squared, or A times B times B, these guys are called factors. Well, sometimes you have a sum that looks like this. AB plus CD. Well, this guy is now called, this guy's a term. CD is also a term, but the A is a factor, okay, of this term. The C is a factor of this term. AB is a term, CD is a term. And throughout this book, the domain is always real numbers unless it's otherwise stated. Okay, let's talk about when we're going to use these. I'm going to simplify. We're going to simplify a couple of these and try to figure out what property of, of uh, the real numbers we're going to use to you know, make these uh, things a little simpler. Now, why would you want to use these? Well, sometimes in mental math, you, want to, you see a problem like this one right here. You want to add it as quick as you can. And now looking at this, I know that really quickly, uh, I mean, I could try to do 43 plus 78 in my head, um, but... You know, I'm not that good. But I know that I, pr I definitely, definitely, definitely could add 43 plus 7 in my head. So a lot of people who would add these would do, okay, 43 plus 7 is 50 plus 78 is 128, right? But why can we do that? Let's talk about the properties that actually tell us we can do that. So we're starting off here. This is what's given. This is our given. How did I go from here? This is given. Okay, how did I go from here to here? Let's look. Um... Uh, are they in the same order? The sevens here, oh, the parentheses are still around these, so I didn't switch the, the group, but I switched the order inside this group, didn't I? I flipped these, and there's a property that says, that, you know, that the order doesn't matter. What, you know, A plus B is equal to B plus A, right? That's the commutative property. So to go from here to here, I'm using the commutative property. Okay, nice. Now I'm looking here. All right, let's look down here. Is the order the same? Yes, they're all the same. It goes 78, 43, 70. Oh, but look at the group changed. I'm changing the association. I'm changing which numbers. So I'm going to associate these guys two together first. So the associative property says I can do that. All right? Now, uh, I look again. What did I do here? Oh, I found this sum. So what I did here is I, I, I'm looking at this. How did I get this? Well, I added these two together. So I substituted 50 because I know that 50 equals 43 plus 7, so I'm going to substitute 50 in where the 43 plus 7 is because they're equal, so I'm using here substitution. And finally, 128 again, I'm substituting. I'm substituting 128 in for this because I know that 128 is equal to this. So I'm using these properties, okay? So we're thinking about, well, why can we do these things? These properties of the real numbers are letting us know why. Now, let's go on. Can you see this? Whoa. Woo, the camera's flying, whoa, whoa.